Hello friends, today I'm going to show you some fun thing using Linux command lines. That is, today we are going to burn a DVD remotely from the remote computer. We are not going to copy any single file from this computer to remote computer in order to burn the DVD. Alright, so let's get started. Alright friends, here I am in my working machine here. So this is CentOS 7. Point zero. Okay, so here I'm going to get a new terminal here. Okay, this is uh, so this terminal will be my local machines terminal, and also I'm going to log into the remote machine. All right. So as I stated earlier, we are not going to copy any more file to the remote computer. So let me log into my remote computer. So remote computer will be. Alright, before logging to the remote computer, let me show you testing method of this system. Alright, so let me show you how are we going to do this demo. Alright. Okay friends, this is the one of two machines that we are going to use in this demo. So this is the writing machine. As you can see, we have a DVD writer attached there. That is because this internal DVD writer no longer works. And also you can see this machine is connected to the LAN. So when writing DVDs like uh, this, it is recommended to use oh, at least one machine in wired network. So in my working machine, we are in wireless interface. So this is in wired connection. All right, so this is our writing machine. So on the other hand, this is the testing machine. You can see both of these machines are in Ubuntu live mode or we boot in Ubuntu Live. Alright, so operating system is not installed. We are using the live image here. Now, here we are going to use this machine as our testing machine, all right? So once the data is written from this machine, all right, we are going to use this machine to test the data, all right? So let me insert this DVD into this, this writer all right so we can start the process so let me insert this one so this is some difficulty in one hand okay we success all right now let's go to our working machine and do the writing process. All right, welcome back. So as you can see in the other room, we have two machines, all right? So one is for DVD writing and one is for testing. So now here, so I'm going to SSH to that DVD writing machine, all right? So the IP address is 523.131, all right? So that is Ubuntu is the user. All right, let me enter the password. All right. So now we inserted the DVD to that writer. All right. So let me go ahead and clean the DVD because the test data in the DVD is still there. All right. So I'm going to clean the DVD by using WOTIM. All right. Uh, so I have to specify the DAU. That means DAU SR1. So as you know, that machine has a DVD writer attached to that therefore we have to use SR1 so if we use SR0 that will address to the internal DVD writer which is no longer work all right so we are going to use SR1 here so I'm going to use blank oops so I'm going to use full blank all right that this will be all all right so I'm going to use verbosity and I said the speed to 4 maximum speed for this DVD uh, RWD so I should use sudo here okay so so while this blank let me uh, show you how are we going to do this thing all right so uh, we are going to use uh, Linux uh, pipe operations all right so that means uh, with the pipe we can uh, redirect some process output to another process input so the pipe symbol looks like this so it, if you press the shift button and 
uh, backslash sign you get the pipe symbol all right so if we get this uh, if we check this file pipe symbol all right oops Let me clear the terminal so if we get this pipe symbol so before the pipe symbol we must have something that outputs to standard terminal all right or rather std out so the process that writes to std out is resides before the pipe symbol on the other hand the after the pipe symbol we have the process that reads data from the std in all right so before the pipe std out after the pipe std in all right so this is the basis that we are going to use in order to do that all right so as you know we have another machine there that other room so let me log into that machine so let me get a new terminal and let me slide down here so that the IP address will be 101 so I'm going to use SHH so Ubuntu so both are in the Linux live image all right all right now let me clear the terminal here all right so here now we can work with these two machines all right so if I uh, let's um, all right uh, let's uh, cat some of this file all right so let's cat this pen dot md file here all right as you can see we have single line right now let me clear that now this is a process oops this is process uh, this is a process that's write data to std out you see the data is displayed in the std out now we can use uh, this one before the pipe in order to uh, get the redirection all right so now we need a command that uh, read the data from the input all right or rather std in so you may heard when you are family, uh, doing linux you may heard that uh, there is a command called nc or netcat or ncat so netcat command is known as swiss army knife so you can do most of the things using netcat command so you can execute bash commands and you can test the ports and you can test socket programs using netcat you know you can do many things with net netcat so here in two days this uh, cd writing uh, or rather dv writing thing also we are going to use the netcat program all right so uh, now we discuss this one so this one writes to the standard out now let's discuss the network uh, sorry netcat a little bit all right so uh, in the netcat you simply go type the nc in the in my distribution it's nc so after space you type the IP address so let's see I'm going to access this machine so 52313 that is 101 so let's assign, assign a port so 8999 and press enter alright so after a while I get connection reviews so that is saying that in this machine there is no one in port 8999 to listen to so if I enter the netcat command in this machine like this in c minus l8999 that says listen to the tcp port 8999 so this machine now listen to 8999 and if i enter the same command again you see i don't get anything but if i type hello here you can see the hello displayed in this machine so if i type back so that data goes back to here all right, this is the property that we are going to use in order to write the series. All right, so now how are we going to combine this with the uh, pipe operator? All right, all right, let me close this command here. All right, so let me close this one also. So as you can see, we ca if we use the cat, uh, this is short for current cat, I think, cat uh, pen.md5, it uh, writes the data to standard output stream all right now we can use this with nc all right netcat so if we use netcat like this as you can see this is our stdin so we type hello in stdin and it's transferred here so we can use this output 
to the netcats stdi and input to transfer data so if i use this same command i'm going to copy this and paste this you can see again i get the connection refuse so if i listen here and if i enter here as you can see instead of the contents are displayed in this terminal the contents are displayed in this terminal all right so using this we can transfer data from this machine to a remote machine all right so as you can see this uh, process of cleaning the dvd is still going on so let me pause the video once uh, this cleaning process is complete let's go ahead and burn the dvd with the data all right all right friends uh, now the cleaning process is completed now let's uh, do the actual write all right so let me clear the terminal before do anything here all right now uh, let me go to the directory that my files exist that the files that i'm going to write all right so let me go to the cd mount sda3 all right so let me go to the dvd folder all right so here we have three files and these are the files that we are going to write to the dvd which is in the remote machine all right so let me check the uh, size that we require so we roughly require 4.3 g all right so now before we do the actual writing we need to do one thing all right so that is we are going to calculate the hashes for each and every files in this folder so we can do the testing in the testing machines all right so i'm going to use the md5 hashing algorithm in order to calculate the hashes so let me calculate the hashes like this so for file in dollar ls all right so we are going to use a for loop in bash so the this dollar dollar means so we are running another command inside this for loop so for each output line in this ls command do the process so the line output line assigned to this file variable all right so now for file in dollar ls all right now i press enter and here i enter 2 and i'm going to use md5 sum i'm going to use in binary mode all right so dollar file all right and finally done so as you can see once i press the enter after done it starts calculating the hash values all right so now this process takes some time so let me pause the video all right uh, looks like we have a success command so now these data are written to the terminal all right now we need this data to write to a file so let me push the app arrow here so as you can see the, the command that we entered earlier so i'm going to pipe this command into our parent directories hash dot md5 all right so once this completed we should have a hash dot md5 file in our parent directory and we can copy that all right let's copy that so or rather move it so move parent directory is hash dot md5 to this one all right so if we ls it we have that one all right now let's see whether we can uh, do checking in this machine all right so i'm going to use md5 again md5 sum so this is just simple test so minus c so hash dot md5 all right now what this does is it calculates the md5 and uh, check the hash against the files hash all right as you can see all files are matches all right now let me clear the terminal here now let's do the actual writing here all right so we are using pipes as i mentioned earlier so before the pipe we need something that outs to standard output all right std out so i'm going to use mkisofs here so you know the linux users you know that this command so this is used to generate the dvd or cd files uh, cd images so mkisofs so now options we need to specify options right now so since we are using writing a dvd i'm going to use udf so universal disk format 
and O that means output. So output to std out. So if I use simple dash without writing anything, this tells the MTIS OFS to write to terminal. All right. So the files after that I need to specify files. The files are in the current folder. Every file. So if I press enter like this, you can see everything writes into terminal. So let me reset my terminal like this. So get my previous command. Now, as you saw, this command successfully writes to std out. Now, this should be come before the pipe and pipe the data back to the remote machine using nc. So nc. Now instead of this machine, now we are going to use this machine. All right. So five dot twenty three dot one three one. All right. So eight nine 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 four. So if I enter this one, you will see we got connection refused. All right. Let me clear the terminal and get the last command. Now here in this machine, I'm going to listen the network by using nc minus l eight nine nine nine. Now this process writes to the standard output of the terminal. So this one also here, if we take the full process this one out to standard output and pipe to net nc standard input which is connected to this machine and this machine has a listener which is in turn writes the data from this command to the std out of this terminal all right so now we need this one to pipe into the cd writing command of this computer so the cd writing command of this computer is grow isofs grow isofs all right now, since this is our first session, I'm going to specify uh, minus Z here. So, specifying the initial session of this DVD. All right. Now, DVD write device is dev slash sr1. Now, I'm going to equal it to slash dev slash fd slash zero. This means get the data to the sr1 from the file descriptor 0 that is allocated to this one which is another way of saying read the data from std out and write those data to sr1 or rather our tvd and we need another command that is dvd compact that denotes that the input data that we receive from this one is a iso image so directly write that data to the writing device without doing anything all right so as you saw earlier we have to first set the receiver in the nc before we send in data so let me press enter here as you can see now it's waiting the data from the stdin all right so if i press enter here as you can see the data pushes to this machine all right. All right. Now, as you can see, current writing speed is set to 4.1x. All right. So let me go ahead and open the network term. Uh, sorry, uh, system monitor in order to show you the network usage. All right. So let me open system monitor. So let me get that. So here you can see the network. As you can see, I have sending 6.3 megabits per second all right this is megabytes per second so capital b excuse me my mistake so this is kilobytes per second so that is we are transmitting 6.2 megabytes per second to the remote machine all right so uh, let me pause the video all right friends as you can see the writing process is completed all right so this one completes the data tra transmission and this one is flushing the cache and uh, closing the disk all right so as you can see here we have the transmission stopped and we are not sending any more bytes as early all right so once this complete so after we after some time this will display a message saying that uh, reloading the tray once i get that message let me go ahead and change the disks all right as you can see i got the reloading tray message so let me go ahead and change the dvd to the test machine so friends as you can see this tray is ejected right now let's uh, insert this dvd to this 
machine. All right, so let me get this out. Put this side. Place this in. All right, now let's see the test data in this test machine. Let's go other side. All right, friends, uh, now we successfully swap the DVDs. So let me clear this terminal and let me mount the DVD into a mount folder. All right, so let me go to my mount folder. All right, so as you can see, I already created a folder for DVD. So let me mount, mount, slash dev slash sr0 notice that we are using sr0 here that is the internal dvd rom of this machine is work so we can use sr0 so mount sr0 to the dvd folder and i need sudo to do this so press enter all right so as you can see now it's successful mounted and it's saying that we cannot write to the device because it's write protected so let me go ahead to the dvd folder and if we ls this you can see that we have the file that written to the dvd so let me do the check so md5sum and minus c hash dot md5 so if i enter this one you can see now it's calculated the hash in this different machine all right so let me pause the video so i will resume after the calculations are completed okay friends so as you can see we have the md5 hashes checked here now the checking is completed so as you can see all the hashes are matched so this is how you remotely burn dvds from local machine all right so to double check so let me show you that no files have been co copied here, right? So here, as you can see, there are no such files like this, all right? All are uh, happen on the fly in the real time network. So no file copied there. So this machine send the data to this machine directly and same time on the fly, that data written to the DVD, all right? So the integrity check also confirms the data that we written to the DVD from the network using pipes are okay and the files integrity are correct and we can use this DVD in any other machine that we use uh, like no all right so I hope you enjoy this video I hope uh, you have fun with this so feel free to play around this with these commands so I in the description I will post every single command that I used here so you can use this method uh, like uh, the method in the situations like uh, where you don't have enough space uh, in the both of your machines all right so you know that kind of uh, situations you can use all right so if you don't have permission to write to the hard disk of the remote machine all right okay so you have a service like remote writer service all right whatever so you can use this command just for fun if you want you can play with this around all right so with that being said don't forget to subscribe to my channel that is fun tech with hashan also do not forget to click the bell icon so so you will get a notification when i upload a new video so Again, thanks for watching and thank you very much. Stay safe and have a nice week.